Praise be to God. I welcome each and every individual today for uh, today's Christmas uh, message or a Bible study on Christmas. Uh, actually, in 2019, Santa Claus was in Abu Dhabi. And 2020, Santa Claus was in Dubai. 2021, half Santa Claus was in Chennai. And uh, 2022, zero Santa Claus is today here in Qatar. So next week, I'll try to wear my Santa dress because Gayeshka was asking, anyhow, I'm so glad that uh, today we are going to see three very, very important topics about Christmas. As Maggie was praying, she was mentioning that all through the world, people are celebrating it in a worldly manner, forgetting about the spirituality of why Christ was born. You know, Jesus Christ was born into this world to save sinners like you and me. That was the main purpose of Christ coming into this world. But what is now happening is everybody is giving their own definitions about Christmas and they're just... Uh, Spoiling the sanctity of it. Now, the birth of Jesus, everybody are well versed knowing about the stories and uh, the beautiful uh, Bethlehem manger and everything. Now, today, as we saw, joy, salvation and peace. So it's easy for everybody to remember three letters, J-S-P, joy, salvation and peace, J-S-P. So the three topics today, it's J-S and peace. Fine. Now, let's go into the topic. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, to, verses 10 to 11. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Some places it is written, fear not. I bring you good news or good tidings that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. What a beautiful thing. Huh? All three of our topics are here beautifully portrayed. You can see that. First, first one is actually... Uh, first topic is actually, sorry, yeah, the Zoom is gone here. Just a second. Sorry, 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 guys. My Zoom is out. Anyhow, I'll just come now. No, 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 no. Did something wrong? No, you are here. You are the Zoom only. No, no. Just a sec, just a sec, yeah. See, do not be afraid is there. And then you see great joy is there. And also... The savior, the salvation part. Now, what are the basic for a fruitful Christian life? You know, what are the basic for the true Christian life? It is joy, the salvation, and the peace. First, joy, certainty of God's promise. Salvation, God's deliverance of a people or an individual from a threatening situation. And the peace, knowing the forgiveness of the Lord. Three topics. What is God's promise? God said he will be with you. He's going to guide you and he will lead you. And what is the peace? The peace which God gives is the eternal peace which he gives. And the last but not the least, the peace. Not as the world gives. God gives us the peace which is very, very, very different. Now, the birth of Jesus. Why did Jesus send the angels? Ah, this many people have a question. Why did God or why did our Father God send the angels to announce the birth of Jesus Christ? And the second one, why the first people to hear this good news were shepherds? Everybody are asking, no? Why the shepherds? There are so many people. Now, let's go into the topic and see what is happening. Announcement of good news of great joy. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, 8 to 9 says, There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. When you see the angel of the Lord, what you will do? You will be terribly terrified. You will be terrified. What is this? What is this going to happen? Why is this angel here? What is going to happen? They'll be terribly terrified. So that is what is happening here. Now, the birth of Jesus. Why did God send angels to announce the birth of Jesus? Why did he send? Why? Many of us might ask, no? Some prophet could have come and told. Why angels? What was the purpose? Although Jesus was the son of God and the savior of the world, his birth was largely ignored. That's what, you know, his birth was totally largely ignored. People did not know that the Savior is going to come. No, the exact time and everything. So everybody were under ignorance. On the night he was born, his mother had to lay him in a manger. Everybody says, my God, the whole world, Jesus was born in a manger. Believe me or not, in the scriptures, in the Bible, know where it is said where Jesus was born. The Jesus was born and he was laid up in a manger. So I'll get out the wrong uh, topic. Huh? He was not born in a manger. Okay, He was born from his mom 
how he was born, it's not mentioned in the Bible, but he was laid in a manger. That was the sign he gave to the shepherds also, because there was no room for them. Every, everybody knows the story, because they had to go and register themselves. Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem. It was packed, so they had to give birth in a place where it is not supposed to be a proper place. His birth was the most important event in the history of the universe. His birth differentiated the whole world as before Christ and after Christ, Anno Domini, you know. His birth initiated two different uh, history in the universe. It must be celebrated and had to be explained. Why? Many people have a big question. Why am I supposed to celebrate Christmas? Jesus Christ was born once. So he was born, he saved me. So why should I uh, celebrate it year after year? I'll explain to you later on why it is more important when we come to the part of salvation. Now, so that the people would understand that God the Son had become a man to save sinners. See, such a great God. Such a great God. He has come in humanity beautifully. He's a divine God. He's 100% divine and 100% human. He's coming into this world to save you and me sinners. So God sent angels of all creatures to tell people the good news. See, to everybody, he's sending the angels to tell the good news. So in that case, they would have been known about the angels in that century. So that is why they recognize the angels. The birth of Jesus. Why did God send? Hmm? Ah, why the first people to hear this good news were shepherds? First question I answered. Huh? Why it is angels? Because angels, they had a remarkable uh, introduction and they've been seen by people. So that is the reason, because just after the Old Testament, the New Testament is starting. So if angels come and uh, mention that the Christ is born, they could have uh, actually believed. So that could be the reason. Okay. Why the first people to hear this good news were shepherds? Why was that the shepherds? Why? Why those people? Drought water people. Why are they? Various explanation has been offered. It's not in the scriptures, but you wanted to give you a certain explanation. The first explanation is shepherds make a connection with King David the royal ancestor of Jesus, who was also a shepherd. That's why the good news was announced to the shepherds. Because Jesus started from the lineage of David. So David was a shepherd. Moses was a shepherd. So many shepherds. So in this lineage, when Jesus Christ was born, the good news must be said to the shepherds. Second explanation what they say is, to fulfill the prophecy in the book of Jeremiah, if you read Jeremiah 33, 13, 15 to 16, the shepherds prove that Jesus is the Christ. Next, please. Now we go to the third explanation, which is a quite uh, different one. The shepherds were outcast and thus their presence in the manger shows that salvation is for everyone. You know, they are the downtrodden people. Actually, shepherds, they will never allow, you know, in the house or anywhere because they go all around the places. They go with the sheep. They are dirty. They have rugged clothes and nobody will allow them in the house. And so such a such sort of a downtrodden people. It shows that salvation is for everyone. Everyone, you have to be careful. Huh? Who is that everyone? The shepherds were treated unclean because they lived in the outfield and were unable to keep the ceremonial law. You know the, all the ceremonial laws. They had to clean, make yourself neat, tidy. They were more worried about the outside cleanliness than the, the, uh, rather than the heart which is supposed to be clean and which is supposed to be pure to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, They were also regarded as liars and thieves. See, thieves were there. Liars were there. They, well, you know, you also know that uh, story about a shepherd coming and uh, saying that uh, we have heard whenever we, when we were small, he's saying that the leopard or the lion is coming, something he will say, and every people will be running and going. And really, one day the lion comes, he says, The lion comes, nobody believes, and he will be killed. Likewise, they could have been liars. This, these were the stories in my childhood I have heard of. And their testimonies were not accepted in a court of law. If a shepherd is going to give a testimony, nobody will agree or accept their statement. We think that God is for the good people, but God is for the needy sinners who are desperate for grace. He came for those who are lost. You know, Jesus Christ did not come for those who were full and who were abandoned. He came for those which were lost. He came for the lost sheep, the lost kind and the lost son. Now, the three topics, I told you, you know, JSP, easily you can keep. If tomorrow anybody is going to ask you, uh, I was going to ask you about what was the topic very easily. JSP, joy, salvation, peace. God brought me on Christmas. What was the joy? Let us see the joy in Luke's gospel 2.10. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for them. See, now if I say it's a good news, you're not taking it. But in those times, those people were suffering a lot with the Roman people, Roman empire and everything. No, 
So in that time, they basically needed uh, definitely a deliverer, a savior, a messiah. They are waiting and they are longing for him. So in that case, the angel is saying, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And salvation, Luke's gospel 2, 11 to 12, very beautiful verse. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in his clothes and lying in a manger. Who is the savior? The one who saves the people. The one who saves the rugged people. The downtrodden people. He is coming. And for the peace, Luke's gospel, chapter 2, 13 to 15. Suddenly a large army of angels appeared with the angel. There is a large army means host. It's an angel, angelic host with an angel. They were praising God by saying, what a beautiful first choir, huh? first choir song they sang. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those who have his goodwill. Peace to who? To those who have his goodwill. The angels left them and went back to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told us about. This is the peace. Once again, I'm reiterating J-S-P. Joy, salvation, and peace. So it's easy for you, you know. What is the joy God is giving you? What is the salvation he has provided you? What is the peace he's trying to do? What is the good news? Everybody says. Now, regarding the joy we read, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I'll bring you good news that will, great, that will cause great joy for all the people. It is saying for all the people that there are going to be joy. If you see joy, really, in the scriptures, Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Paul and Silas, they were in the prison. Still, they were joyful, singing songs. And they were so happy. When the, the lost son came to the father, huh, he was so happy, joyful. He kind of flattened the calf and he gave a great feast. He, had, he was so much joyful. The woman who lost a single silver coin, she was joyful when she found her one single coin, golden coin. And uh, when you go for the she shepherd, he lost a sheep. He was so joyful. So the meaning of the word joy, many were joyful. But are you joyful in Christ? Is, are you attaining the joy which God is giving you? Now let us see what is the good news. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. Some verses will be repeating, but it is so important. Because as Christ is born as a savior, you got to meditate each and every word very carefully. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. See, great joy. Don't be afraid. Fear not. I am bringing you a salvation. Here itself, the whole message is clear. Don't be afraid means what? He's saying, have peace. Peace upon you. Some translations say, peace I'm giving you because I, you gotta, you are having a savior. You will have be joyful. You know, that uh, Luke's gospel 2, 10 to 11 itself says, every word in the angel's announcement was important. See, that is that. Some uh, translations say, fear not. Some translations say, do not be afraid. It's all the same. Don't be afraid. Fear not. It's almost the same. This word assure, offered assurance. The appearance of an angel is always a terrifying experience. How it will be bright. I've never seen. But with the experience of what we have seen, I'm just telling you. And the shepherds needed to know that they were safe. The angel had come to give them good news. Evangelio so. You know, that is the good news in Greek. Oh, great joy. The good news brought great joy. The appearance of an angel is always terrifying. Already we saw that. The, the angel, it came to give the good news. It's a great joy for them. Why? Salvation is a good news. You know, a savior is born. A deliverer is born. So you'll have to be very, very happy. That is what is mentioned for all the people. Everybody now thinks for all people, Jesus Christ came. But be very, very careful to whom Jesus Christ came. At first, it may seem that this promise refers to all people everywhere. You may think that it is for everyone. And it is common. But clearly when you read it, good news for all people is a biblical truth. Yes, it's for all people. Good news. Jesus is the savior of the world. And this good news is for everyone. You got my point? The news has to be spread to everyone. But let's be careful. This is not the meaning of this actual phrase. Let us go through the actual part of the meaning. The angel did not say all people. It's not all people. But all the people. And the definite article, the, distinguishes these people from others. What is the particularity of the? In those days, the people was a common terminology by the Jews. The good news is not just for the Jews. It is for everyone. But what the scripture says is, 
to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You know, it is, people take it as it is only for the Jew. It is for all people. They misinterpret. But actually, let us go to the next slide. You will understand actually who is mentioned. Now, has been born to you. You know, see, the, pe who, the, the people means who, you know, those who believe and trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus has come. He died on the cross. He resurrected and he has uh, ascended to the heaven. But if you don't believe in him, then how can uh, he be your savior? You got my point? That is the most important thing. He has been born to you. What is surprising is that this child was born to the shepherds. See there? First news, good news was spoken to the shepherds. They were told that the savior has been born. Ordinarily, a baby is born to a family. They are, see, who gets gifts and everything in the family when a child is born? That uh, members of the child. But here, we are getting the gifts because of his birth. What the gift? Eternal life is the gift he has given us. In this case, however, the child's life is for the shepherds and for their salvation. Now here you see, now he's mentioning it for the shepherds. Don't think that uncle, well, only it is for the shepherds. No. It is for each and every individual who believes in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, whoever believes definitely they will attain this eternal life because Christ came to die, came to this world to die for you and me being the sinners. But he was not for them alone. Jesus is for everyone who receives him by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the most important key word you have to understand. He is the savior, but to whom? Who has accepted him as the savior. Those who say that Jesus Christ is my savior and believes and is baptized and also believes in his words, who has faith, to him he is saying. You got my point? Yeah. Now, what is the application part we are going to see from the, how joy stems from us or flows from us, how joy comes out of us, what joy is uh, initiating from us, what, let's see what joy is doing. First thing, joy comes from knowing that we are loved. Oh my God, this is a very, very, very lovely term I like. You are loved by whom? The Father God, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life and perishes not. So this is the love the Father gave. This is the love the Father showed that you and I are being loved by him. So he was sent into this world because of this love. So this joy is that my God, my Father loves me. He loves me. Do you love him? That is the next question I'm going to ask you. Do you love him? Do you really take care of him? Do you really accept him as your savior? That is the most important question. So the se second point is from knowing what we have. Uh, so, so from knowing we have, see, the fellowship with the Lord. What type of fellowship you are having with the Lord? What type of fellowship Abraham had? What type of fellowship Paul had? Abraham, he called him as brother. Abraham, you called uh, the disciples, Jesus called them as my friends, correct? For you and me, he has given the sonship. He's asked us to call Abba Father. You and I have the relationship of our sonship. Abba Father, do you have that relationship with God? If you have that relationship, joy will definitely flow like anything. From knowing that the God of providence, see, he is the God of providence. What we need, just believe me, eh? I'm telling you something. What we need what we have to do, everything he knows. But what we do is we panter a lot. We panic a lot. We want to do X, Y, Z. And ultimately, we sit down and cry because we don't understand my God is a God of providence. He will give me. He will provide me. He is Jehovah Jireh, my God. You got to have faith in him. You will definitely provide. And last but not the least, from knowing the best is yet to be. You might not have received the best. You might not be at the best, but I believe and I tell you today as a promise, your best is yet to come. Your, yes, your best is yet to be received. Your best is yet to be enjoyed. Second topic is the salvation. First, I finish J. In JSP, joy, salvation, and peace. See, I memorized very quickly. Salvation, second one. What is salvation? Luke's gospel, chapter 2, 11 to 12. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in his clothes and lying in a manger. Who is a savior? Let's see the next topic. What child is this? What type of child is this? David's royal son is a savior, is a Christ, or is a Lord. Who is this? What type of a child he is? 
David's royal son. What does that mean? The city of David means it is Bethlehem. He was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread. Many of the times we have read. And also there is two types of Bethlehem, not a single Bethlehem. Okay. And the child born to the shepherds was David's royal son. He was a royal son of David, but born, uh, born in a, actually it's not in a manger. He was uh, born in a place. Okay. We don't say that manger because he was kept on a manger. Savior. A savior is a deliverer. Someone who rescues people from death and destruction. I'll give you an example. Who is actually a savior? Moses was a savior. How he led all the Israel last week or the week before we saw Joseph, Moses, minister of God, we saw him. He brought out all the Israelites out, out of Egypt. You know, He rescued them or else they would have been in bondage. They would have died there. Out of destruction, he brought them. He wanted to take them to Canaan, but he couldn't fulfill. Then there came another deliverer called Joshua. Joshua then led them and uh, uh, they went and uh, conquered it. Caleb was there and everybody was there. They went, same thing, we had judges. You see, uh, Gideon was a judge, Othniel was a judge, Samson was a judge, Deborah was a judge. All these judges were brought to deliver people. You got my point? So in the same manner, in the New Testament, to deliver us from the sins, somebody has to come. Somebody, see, if Jesus Christ wouldn't have been born, by this time, you and I would have been sacrificing a lot of goat, lot of camel, sorry, lot of um, sheep and everything, and lot of blood will be shed. Why? Because for our forgiveness of sins, we would have gone for the blood of the animals, but one blood, that is the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ has cleansed all our sins and made us clean, those who believe in him. The deliverance that God brought is both of physical deliverance and spiritual. See, it's both physical. Physically, you are delivered, you are free, you are saved. Salvation is free for everyone and spiritually also. Jesus came to save us from sin, Satan, death, and from the wrath of the God. You know, all these were just tormenting us. Sin was tormenting us, Satan, death, and also the wrath of the Lord. All these salvation has come to you. When? When you believe Jesus, when you accept him as your personal savior, you are saved. Amen. Hallelujah. He delivered us from these deadly enemies. By dying on the cross for our sins and then rising again on the third day, giving you and me the everlasting and the eternal life. How many of them can experience this eternal life? How many of them can just um, get everlasting life? You and me. By how? By having belief in Lord. Now, Christ. Christ is the Greek term for Messiah, which means the anointed one. What is the anointed one? In the Old Testament, kings, priests were anointed with oil as a sign of their office. As king or prophet or in the mission of life. See, kings and uh, when the priest, they are going to take before their office, they'll be anointed. So that is why in the Old Testament, kings, priests, and all the prophets were anointed in the same manner. Christ is the anointed one in the New Testament for us. God had already promised that one day he would send a savior. All Israelites, still now, they're waiting for the Messiah. Messiah has come, died, he resurrected, and he's ascended. Nobody believes. But you and I believe. You and I believe. That's why he has given us the sonship. You got my point? You can call him Abba Father when he comes. The Messiah, the anointed one, would save his people forever. Not today, tomorrow. Likewise, it's forever. There is only two things. Eternal wrath, eternal life. Which one you choose is given to us. It's not that you have to choose this only. God gave the option in the Garden of Eden itself. He gave us the choice to choose eternal life or eternal death. It is in your hands and my hands. The Jews had been waiting for this for centuries and still are waiting. But some, some of them have never accepted and they are coming towards Christ. But now the angel proclaimed that the Savior had come, making the great confession that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. They are still waiting, but we know he has come. He has ascended. He is going to come back in the second coming. Lord, the last title the angel gave to Jesus. These are the titles given by the angel, no? Those guys are so surprised. They're just sitting there and they're just watching. What is happening here? And they don't know. And the titles which is given, it is actually the last title the angel gave to Jesus was the Lord. Messiah, Savior, and now Lord Christ, Savior, Messiah, Lord. This title points to his deity and to his sovereign rule over our lives. You know, how he rules over us. The guy who called my Lord, my God, I remember it is um, Thomas Didymus. He mentioned Christ twice. My Lord, my God, he would say. Jesus is the Lord Christ, which means the promised and anointed Savior. 
was none other than God himself appearing in the flesh. See, in this, uh, this part of Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, there is a lot of debate. There is a lot of questions. There is a lot of confusion going on. But one thing I'll tell you and everybody, do not panic. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three in one triune God, you will see them in heaven. Don't worry about that. Correct? Let's go and meet him. Next slide, please. Yeah. What child is this? Already we saw, no? David's royal son. He was born in Bethlehem. We saw that Bethlehem means house of bread. Savior points to his role as a deliverer. He came as a, he came into this world as a deliverer for me and you because we are sinners. We were sinners. And now God has redeemed us and made us a child. And as he's given us a sonship to call him as Abba Farah. Christ points to his office in terms of the promised anointed one of God. He's the anointed one of God who has come to save us. Lord points to his sworn authority. You know, he's the authority he's having. That shows, that's why when um, Peter also mentioned, Lord, he will use the terminology, application. Why is it necessary to preach the gospel? This is very, very, very important. Why should I preach? Why should you preach? Why should everybody preach the gospel? What is there? The good news for the shepherds was that the child, Savior, Jesus Christ, was born in Bethlehem to be their Savior and their God. Okay? They, who said that? The angels came and they preached the good news to them. They would never have known this unless God revealed it to them. Definitely. If God has not revealed it through an angel. Moreover, shepherds, as you know, they go from place to place and they will spread the news very faster. If the angel had not appeared to the shepherds while they were out in the fields, they would have never come to Christ. You know, they would have never come to Christ and they would have never known him. The shepherds acknowledged this when they refer to the good news as, let's see now there is two things. Now when the angels have said, they could have done two things. The choice was there. They could just sleep. Go ahead, man. These angels will come. They will say whatever they want and they could have done that. Or what they could have done is either go and meet Jesus in Bethlehem. But what they did, let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told about us. Luke's gospel, chapter 215 says, let's go. Come on, let's go. This shows how much we need the preaching of the gospel. You know, only if you preach, people will understand who our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is and will understand what is the gospel. Simple thing. If somebody is going to ask you, what is the gospel? Huh? Jesus Christ came into this world. He died on the cross for your sins and my sins. Third die, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into the heaven. And before ascending, 5,000 or 500 people saw him alive and he ascended into the heaven. He's seated at the right side of God, the Father God. He's interceding for you and me and he's going to come back to judge the whole world and take me in with him to heaven. This is the good news, nothing else. Good news is so small. The gospel is so easy to preach. It's very, very easy. I've given you that. To understand what God has done, we need to have someone to explain it to us. By itself, what God has done could not save the shepherds or anyone else. See, by whatever Christ has come, they cannot save, but they have to believe. They have to go to Bethlehem. They have to go see, ah, this is the Savior. This is the Messiah. We believe in you. This is how God saves us, not simply by sending Jesus to be our Savior, but also by preaching us the gospel. They pro see, Jesus came. We have preached the gospel. We have to believe in the saving works, and you got to preach the gospel to others so that not only you, you hear it, eternal life, but everybody in it is the eternal life. What is the sign that was given to us? What is the sign? Do the shepherds believe God gave them a sign to confirm his promise? What was that? The angel said, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. So that means, that's why I see the shepherds would have gone and many babies would have been there. Correct? But a baby in a manger is the Messiah. How would the shepherds know for sure that they had the right child? Which one was Christ? All they had to do was to find the baby who was arriving on the manger. That was the sign. For you and me, it is the sign to believe. The point of this sign was not so much what Jesus was wearing, which was common enough, but where he was sleeping. That is the most important thing. The angel had to tell them this because otherwise they would have never believed it. When they went, when they saw a ah, baby in the manger, Joseph and Mary there. Ah, then they believed. Who would ever expect to find a baby in a manger? Especially one who was given to be our savior. You know, generally what people think or what people assume is a great king, a lord, should be born in a palace. But here he comes in a very poor form for the poor people so that the downtrodden could be saved. 
He can recognize Jesus the same way that the shepherds recognized him by his humility. He humbled himself. 100% he washed the uh, disciples' uh, legs and he was so much, uh, uh, he was proving his humility in this world. He showed us a servant master. What a beautiful God he is. When we see him dying in the cross, we know that he is Christ whom God has sent to save us. He died on the cross for your sins and my sins. So you see that, you believe in that, that the uh, robber or the thief on the cross also believed and uh, he's also saved. He said today, you will be with me in paradise. We finished J and S, joy and salvation. Now we come to peace, JSP, joy, salvation and peace, peace. Luke 2, 13 to 15. Suddenly a large army of angels appeared with the angel. They were praising by saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those who have this good will. The angels left them and went back to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told about. Now say, they're going. What is, they are giving peace upon earth. What is this peace? Suddenly a large army of angels appeared. They were all singing and praising for his grace to the sinners. They are singing beautiful. That was the first choir, huh? The first choir in the scripture was by the a multitude of angels, you know, those angels were singing. After giving glory to God in the highest, the angels proclaim peace upon earth. What are they saying? They're giving a peace, joy, you'll have salvation, you will attain, and then what will come into you is peace. What is this peace? Shalom in Hebrew. Peace means shalom in Hebrew. Peace with God. What type of peace you have? Until we have peace with God, we cannot have any true peace at all. Sure, we'll have to have peace with God. If you don't have peace with God, always murmuring to God, Lord, this happened to me. Lord, that happened to me. Lord, I'm not getting the first mark. Lord, I'm not getting my salary. Of course, I'm in that condition, okay? That's why I'm saying that. Lord, I'm not getting this. Christmas is coming. What is this God? If you're going to be murmuring and uh, crying, you will not have peace within you, with God, and you won't have peace with others also. Our sins cry out against us and we are afraid to die because we know that we deserve judgment. See, why people are afraid of death, you know, they deserve judgment. That is why you and I are not supposed to be afraid because once you die, you'll go into the lap of the Father, you know, you'll have eternal life, don't worry. But Jesus came to give us peace with God by paying the penalty that our sins deserve. Our sins deserve a lot, big penalty. We paid nothing. Freely we received uh, the salvation. Freely, we'll have to announce it to others and freely let everybody get this salvation. Once we have peace with God, we can have peace with one another by the power of his Holy Spirit. That's why first you'll have to attain the peace with God. Then you'll have to attain the peace with others. You'll have peace within yourself by the Holy Spirit. Application. How to get the full benefit of peace in our life? How you will get it? When we come to God through faith in Christ, we have real peace. See, I, I, I always used to say, I always used to say, still now I will uh, reiterate. I, I was uh, saying to somebody else also, peace, I will have it only in heaven. Till now, why with God with me and all, we will have no tears, nothing will be there. Only our job will be praying, praising God, worshipping God. So definitely I will attain peace. But God is saying, you will have real peace through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do not always gain the full benefits of the peace because sometimes we forget to trust God. Why your peace is lost? We fail to trust God. We are not depending upon God. So immediately the peace is lost. But as we trust in him, he gives us peace. Once you, that's why it says, those who are heavy laden and burdened, come to me. Lay your burden, cast your burden unto me. I'll give you rest. I'll give you peace. I'll give you eternal peace. The peace which God gives you, you know, it is going to be eternal, everlasting. And those peace will be very beautiful. We do not need to be anxious about the future. Forget about the future. You don't need to put everything into his feet. That is what God said. God said to three persons, go in peace. The first uh, guy, that was um, Naaman, the Syrian. He was having a lot of disease, leprosy. When he was cleansed, Elisha, the prophet said, go in peace. See, that kind of a peace you will have. To the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus Christ will say, go in peace. You will have peace. See, all these peace which God is mentioning in the scriptures, when Jesus Christ came into the closed room, after he got resurrected, he came peace upon the earth, he will say. He gives peace. First thing, wherever you go to any house, tell them peace. Three things, tell them. Have joy. Attain the salvation. 
and God gives you the eternal peace. Next slide, please. We do not need to be afraid what people will think. Yeah, that's, that's the big problem here. Now we think what this person will think, that person will think, how am I going to face them? Forget it. God is there. He will do it. We do not need to try to solve our problems on our own. If you try to solve your problems on your own, you will never find peace and you cannot solve your problem. You do not be worried how God will provide us. He will provide. He is the God who provides us. Don't worry. We need not be, be despair if we lose what we love. Sometimes we lose some things. Sometimes we lose many things. I don't want to mention exactly particular things. We lose a lot. When we lose, leave it. God will give us the peace. All we need to do is trust in God. He will give us the peace. Today, God is telling you. He's telling you joy. He's telling you salvation, peace. If you don't have joy, come to him. He'll give joy. If you're not saved, be baptized. Believe in God and be saved. You will attain the peace. That's what God said. Here, see the Luke 2, 10 to 11. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news or good tidings that will cast great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. What are the basics for a fruitful Christian life? It is joy. Saturnity of God's promise. What is that? Saturnity of God's promise means when the promise of God, which he has given years ago, or long ago, or he gave yesterday, has been fulfilled, and the saturnity is completed. What type of a joy you will have? Wow, 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 wow. Everlasting, eternal, abundant, you name it, you will have salvation, God's deliverance of a people or an individual from threatening. We are supposed to go to eternal wrath, eternal hell, but he has saved you and me by his blood. That is the greatest salvation you and I have attained by believing in our Father, God. Peace, knowing the forgiveness. Ah, he has forgiven me. The forgiveness is there. God has given me the peace. If he has not forgiven you and me, what would have been our condition? What would have been your situation and my situation? Today, you will have no peace. You will have no joy. Without salvation, you will be searching for a deliverer. Who will save me? You will be going behind prophets, asking for what is my future? How will my future be? But God is telling you, don't worry about your future. Your future is engraved in the palm of his hands. So don't worry. People might say many things, but believe. Have joy. Have salvation. And uh, sorry, have joy, attain salvation, and you will have complete eternal peace. No, no. The memory verse, please. That's, yeah, good. Now, we come to the final. The memory verse. Matthew's Gospel 1, 21 and 23. She will give... He will give a birth to a son and you have to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Manuel, which means God with us. Amen. Yeah. See, that is what he's saying. No, no, go back. Go back. See, she will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus. He will save his people. He will save all the people. The virgin will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. means God with us. So God, when God is going to be with us, when God is going to be with you and me, you will have eternal joy. You will have to attain salvation and also the peace, which not this world. The world cannot give you peace. All the peace. The world which cannot give God is going to give you. So this Christmas, God is giving you a promise. You will have joy, you will have to attain salvation, and you will have peace. In this case, what you are supposed to do, you will have to go and preach the gospel to the people, those who are lost, those lost souls. You have attained eternal life. You are going to have everlasting life. Don't allow your friends. Don't allow other people to go to eternal hell and have eternal wrath. So go preach the gospel and bring many more people. That is Christmas. What is Christmas? It's mentioning to each and everybody in the world who have not known about Jesus Christ, saying that a Savior has been born for you. A Messiah is born. He is. He was born 2,000 years ago for your sins and my sins. He died on the cross. He was buried. Rose again three days after. And he was seen by many people. 500 people after he was, uh, after he uh, uh, was resurrected. And he ascended into heaven. He seated at the right hand of God interceding for you and me. He's going to come back to judge this world. This is the gospel. Tell this. Whoever takes it, let them take. Whoever doesn't, it's their choice. But our job, our choice is to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. And Merry Christmas to each and every individual. May God bless you. And let us see you again. Thank you. Amen.